Good morning guys, so BMW has finally unveiled the 5 series and there is a lot to talk about here I'm gonna try to make this, not make this into a 40 minute video We're gonna have a look at the stuff of the spec and tech and then of course we're gonna jump into Photoshop and talk about this design Because I actually think BMW might be heading in a direction that is less controversial with the 5 series it looks pretty good. There are a couple of changes that I would like to change here. I'm going to talk about those. But first of all, let's have a look at the, the this article from Car and Driver. Let's see what's going on here with the 2024 BMW i5. That will be the first one to launch. The, the most powerful member of the 5 Series sedan lineup will be electric. And that is the 590 horsepower i5 uh, M60 X Drive. I think the most powerful member of the 5 Series up until... What we know right now, there of course going to be an M5, which I hope is going to be more powerful than the electric version. Then you have the gas-powered 530i and 540i, and they continue as normal. Overall length, so this is a overall bigger 5 series than the than the than the current generation. It's the length is uh, longer by 3.9 inches. It's 1.3 inches wider and 1.4 inches. Taller, so it grows on pretty much every uh, dimension. In the US, we will have five different 5 Series configurations. You have the base, which is going to be the 530. We'll get BMW's familiar 255 horsepower 2 liter turbo 4 and the option of all wheel drive. And if you want to know more about this, uh, this 5 Series, go and read the full article from Car and Driver linked down below in the description. And BMW claims a 0 to 60 time for the 530, 5.9 for the rear wheel drive, and 5.8 for the X drive, which is not bad at all for a base model. They start at $58,895 and will go on sale this October. So pretty soon from a release of the press car to going on sale. It's about six months or so, I guess. The top of the range, what we know right now it, it, with, when it comes to gas power, is the 540i X drive. It has a 3 liter 6 cylinder with, with 375 horsepower and 398 pound feet of torque, 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. And this goes on sale one month later than the 530 in November. At the bottom of the EV lineup is the i5 e drive 40, which is only a rear wheel drive um, uh, electric vehicle with 335 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque which can be boosted I guess up to 317 pounds feels a little weak for a 5 series even though yes it is the base model 335 horsepower it's crazy to say that that feels weak today in a base model but it is a pretty large BMW with an electric motor so I feel like the base should maybe be a little bit bumped but it uh, has 300 miles and BMW says it will go 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds. Pricing starts at $67,795. The most powerful 5 Series until the next M5 will be the i5 M60 X drive. A dual engine 590 horsepower electric version. Prices start at $85,000 and a 0 to 60 time in 3.7 seconds with 143 miles per hour top speed. And I would like to know how much faster the battery is going to drain if you keep, uh, if, if, for example, if you're on the Autobahn and you want to cruise at 120 miles per hour. I want to have a video with a comparison how much faster the battery drains when you go that fast. And to make sure there's more drama besides the acceleration, the car plays its sport soundtrack. Okay, that might do something to the driving experience. At least they're trying to do something about that. And the range for this top of the range uh, i5 is two, 256 miles. Doesn't feel very impressive. It has a max range mode that promises to optimize the remaining charge in the battery by limiting top speed to 56 miles per hour and shutting down a lot of electronics, the climate control, the heated and cooled seats, and even the heated, heated steering wheel. And you have up to 205 kilowatt, kilowatt DC fast charging with this one. The i5 also comes with a air console video games. So you can use your smartphone to play games while you're charging your phone on the 12.3 inch display. Pretty interesting stuff. So let's talk about this design here and let's jump into Photoshop, have a look at these sketches to start with and the um, development of this uh, 5 series from the very very early sketches. These are probably sketches that were done once the 5 series was already completed just for marketing purposes but they make it look like it's an, it's an, it's an ideation phase here from the start of the very early doodle big sketches right up here which looks to me very crisp and clean and sketches always tend to do that sketches 
in 95% of the cases always look better than the production version but in this case I think BMW did a great job going from these very early sketches you can see the the, the indent here in the nose for example the angle of the front uh, grille it looks pretty cool the rear end has this BMW stance to it it was as we can see in this early sketch already going down to more rendered sketches down here you can see that we have a very clean design and I feel like BMW is moving away a little bit from the uh, sculpted design and line flow that we have in the current 5 series uh, to more of a restricted design when it comes to line, uh, line flow and more so surfacing. It's a very clean surface. There's nothing going on in this surface in the side of the car but that's not necessarily a bad thing because I think we have the key lines to make this an automotive design and those key lines are obviously this sharp shoulder line up here and then this line at the bottom that goes in to the fender in the rear. Very beautiful sketches. I also want to show you the final product right here so you can compare this sketch how much lower wheels are bigger stance is just more planted and then it goes into the production version of the clay model in this case and it still looks good but you lose a lot of that dynamic that you have of course in these design sketches so let's have a look at the front end of the the new 5 series the the production version of this car down here this is not the uh, this is not the gas version this is actually an i5 down here and comparing it to the non m sport 5 series that we have right now i love this design of the current 5 series i think it's a beautiful car with a very interesting shoulder line and i made a uh, video on the um, the m5 f90 on uh, the sketch monkey channel where i talk in detail about how intriguing this shoulder line really is. I, I said that it's one of these trick images where you have almost like a staircase that goes round and round, but it looks like it still goes up, but then it connects again. It kind of blows my mind to look at this uh, shoulder line of the 5 Series. Pretty traditional front fascia of the current 5 Series with the kidneys being properly sized and a lower intake with this pretty weird triangle piece in the side, which I would like to change but they already did that for the for the M Sport version of the 5 series. So looking at the new one, I really like this design. I think it looks clean. There are a couple of changes that I would like to maybe see in the front end. I might put put a video up on redesign on the Sketch Monkey channel of the front end of the 5 series. But overall, we have the graphics exactly where we expect them to, to be and there is no uh, weird bumper lights with the LEDs up top here. The lights are exactly where you want them to be in a if you want to have a more traditional BMW look. The front kidneys are also just an evolution of the current generation. They got a little bit taller, so they stick pretty far into the bumper. And this is one change that I would like to make. You see this black piece here, graphic piece. I'm not sure why BMW is putting this on their cars these days. They have it on the new X5, they have it on the new 5 series and the 3 series as well. They just make this piece too big in my opinion. I want to shrink that down and have more body color in the front end of the car. But overall, I'm really happy to see that BMW did not go insane <laughs> with their styling and put uh, like a grill that goes down to this point right here on the 5 series. I don't think it would suit the 5 series to have a grill like that and I'm really glad to see that they dialed it back a little bit and said let's not go completely crazy with this design but they still had to add some craziness in here and that is this black graphic that we have here so looking at the side view and this is where this new 5 series really shines it looks absolutely fantastic you can see the part of the shoulder line of the um, of the old bmw here i'm going to link my m5 f90 video down in the description I suggest you go and check it out because this uh, uh, line, this shoulder line on the previous 5 Series is really, really a unique shoulder line. Uh, so moving down to the new one, we know what the old one already looks like. So let's talk about the new one here. It feels like we have a more stately looking design. Looking at it from a side view, specifically in this area, look at the hood of the of the old M M5 Series or current M5 Series. And then look at the new one and just how much upright, more upright this front end and in this corner. It looks great. It looks super tight and sharp. And I can't wait to see what BMW is going to do with this generation M5. I think that's going to be an absolute beast, not just in performance, but also in the design. It's super clean and the proportions are right where you want them to be in a 5 Series. 
And look at this, they even sharpened this corner a little bit more than what we have in the current 5 Series, which had more of a rounded uh, feeling in this area here. But here you got a lot more sharpened, which I like. It brings back that uh, 90s and early 2000s BMW style in the new 5 Series with this super crisp shoulder line going all the way to the rear end. And we have a bit of an upswing right here at the very end of the trunk creating a nice send-off for this design. Not sure about this black graphic though in the bottom. We, we still have this black graphic coming back in random places on this car because you can see it doesn't continue into the front end. It just stops here. Here we have a body color in the same height that we have the black graphic in the side view and then it comes back in a big way in the rear right here with the black graphics sticking up into the bumper not just covering the diffuser I also like these wheels these wheels for for an EV or not even we don't even have to say for an EV these are just good looking wheels from BMW we also have the Hofmeister kink right here with an i5 logo stamped into the uh, kink itself so very cool design by BMW I do like how this translated from uh, the uh, the sketches right here you can see this very clean surface and that translated really well into the production car it just looks great this new 5 series so thank you BMW for, for, for taking it a little bit easier on the 5 series it feels like the 5 series uh, maybe to BMW is, is such a special model with such a long history that they want to make it right and not experiment too much with the design I think they did a great job with that I love the previous generation 5 series uh, rear end I think these very thick juicy tail light LED tail lights they just look great with this sharp fold here it looks like it's folded down in in the very end point here creating a higher end point uh, and bringing in some dynamics to this design and here is this crazy shoulder line again going here and then into a chamfer into the greenhouse it's just nuts how they decide the design that uh, chamfer so looking at the new one down here same thing here I, I kind of like this rear end maybe the rear end uh, I would change a little bit on the LEDs here because I think they lack some sort of dynamic feeling to them I want to have them be a little thicker maybe up here create some thicker LEDs going around the top to add, just add some different heights in this design it, now, right now it looks like we just have two strips of LEDs which looks fine but I think this would suit a 7 series more because it's so restricted when it comes to the dynamics of the, of the lighting design that it looks like a 7 series you know more stately the big brother is supposed to be more ele uh, more restrained and serious I think we can have a little bit more fun with the taillights in the 5 series then we have this upswing going from the side into the bumper and here you can clearly see this black graphics that I talked about uh, in the side view just cutting in to the sides of the fender of, of the bumpers they do the same thing in the 3 series as well it kind of looks okay but what I think it does it lifts the rear end up and creates visually it looks like the rear end sits a lot higher because we have this black mass carving into it and creating a void in the graphics in the lower part and doesn't really plant the BMW the way I want it to be planted but here you can see this little ducktail or yeah, I wouldn't call it the ducktail maybe a tiny little uh, sculpted fender uh, spoiler in the top of the trunk which I think looks really great you can see how the light is reflected here which means that we have a curvature going something like this to create this upswing that we want to have if we look at it from a bit of a more side view than this it looks like we still have the same chamfer intact in the pillars here going around the greenhouse but it doesn't go down here like it did in the in the previous 5 series into the shoulder line instead it continues down into the trunk you can see that here that it wraps around the greenhouse in the in the previous one which both are a pretty unique treatment to to line flow in, or in and around the greenhouse so very nicely done in the rear as well last but not least we need to have a look at this interior a couple of things here good things not so good things <laughs> the thing is I just loved the F90 um, the integration of the gauge foster because of this fat thick 
very nice quality feel of the integration of the gauge cluster. Then we have the, um, I think it was the i7 infotainment screen up here, which looks pretty nicely integrated as well. It, you know, it doesn't really connect with everything in the interior, but I would forgive BMW for having it like this because we still have such a nice gauge cluster in the current generation 5 series. Steering wheel is fat and bulky, just like you want in a BMW. So having a look at the new one, I'm not sure if this is the i um, iDrive 8 system or 8.7 maybe, but we still have this new screen that we have on pretty much every single BMW, which in the, I mean, I'm starting to get, to get used to it, but I do wish that it had some housing to it at least, and maybe a cap above the gauge cluster or something like this to create less glare and make it look like it's part integrated in, an integrated piece of the interior and then we have some interesting um, touch panel down here i'm not i can't wait to see how this works when i get to get a chance to review this in person but other than that it looks very clean on the interior of the new 5 series and the good news is i've always complained about when i reviewed new uh, uh, bmws they had this bracket behind so sitting behind here behind the screen you have a bracket that sticks out like this. And I always said that they need to integrate the screen better and remove this hardware that you can see behind the screen. And thankfully, it looks like they did that for the 5 Series. So we don't have this bracket in the back end. Instead, it's clearly, cleanly integrated in the back side of this screen. Then we have a flat bottom steering wheel. And what I do love about this steering wheel is this treatment. This has a very industrial feel. The, uh, the third spoke that we have go the center spoke going down in the middle, you see that we have these holes in it. So it looks like almost a piece of a construction site or something like that. I love the design of that. It just added some random stuff into this spoke while the two other spokes looks pretty uh, traditional in, in the sense of steering wheel design. Overall, I think this design looks great. I do wish, as I said, we had a housing for the gauge cluster and I also wish we had some um, tactile buttons like we have in the in the current one for the climate control in the radio that's it do whatever you want with the software you can put whatever screens and stuff you want in the uh, for the software to control whatever you want except for the climate and radio those are the only two features I always want to have physical buttons for. So overall, I think it's a fantastic design by BMW. I think uh, they took it a little bit easier with the 5 Series and I'm glad to see the approach that they took with this specific design. And I can't wait to see what they're going to do with the new BMW M5.